One technology used for distributed ledger technologies is virtual voting. That's what the hash graph is. So the hash graph is virtual voting, which is different from the other four technologies. So the five technologies were proof of work and leader-based and economy-based and voting-based. The fifth one is virtual voting-based. So how does this compare? Remember that the proof of work is very inefficient, the proof of work based systems, and they also have problems with if you partition it, bad things can happen, and they have problems with fairness, fairness of access, fairness of ordering, fairness of timestamps. In the leader based systems, you have a real DDoS problem that you didn't have before, distributed denial of service where computers on the internet attack one computer and can shut down the whole network. The leader based system has a problem with that, plus the fairness problems, fairness of access, fairness of ordering, fairness of timestamps. And then the third category was the economy-based systems. And for those, we don't have proofs of any kind of fairness and we have no idea what kinds of attacks might or might not work. And so maybe we have problems with all of these things. And we particularly can imagine problems with partitions and problems with malicious nodes tricking the others into losing money or tricking the others into not participating or whatever. There's all sorts of subtle attacks and we have no proofs at all. We have no guarantees that these subtle attacks won't work or that we can't make new subtle attacks in the future. So the economy based systems have a variety of problems here. And then there was voting based systems that have beautiful math proofs and are completely inefficient. A pure voting based system is impractical. Plus you don't have fairness unless you go to an incredibly inefficient system to try to put in fairness, but you generally don't have fairness. So these are the problems with the other four technologies. The virtual voting avoids all those problems. You might also say, well, what if we did something that combined? What if we used pure voting to pick a leader or a group of leaders and then the leaders take turns being leader for two seconds each? Combine the voting with the um, leader base? Or what if we had some kind of a system where we bring it down to a small group of people and then we have one leader proposes a block and then we vote on whether we like the block or not and we have proposers that are leaders and then we have voting on that. Turns out there's lots of ways of building hybrids and whenever you build a hybrid you end up with all the vulnerability flaws of the one and all the vulnerability flaws of the other, both. So hybrids from a security viewpoint, from a fairness viewpoint, from a denial of service viewpoint, hybrids are worse than the two component parts. The whole is less than the sum of the parts. Why would you do a hybrid? Well, usually for speed. Um, that's usually what you need. But with virtual voting, you get more speed than the hybrid and you get none of those security problems. So here's what virtual voting is. Start for hash graph. And this is the way it was originally developed. Start with the voting based systems, the pure voting based systems, they go back decades. They come from the distributed systems community. They come from the fault tolerance communities, different communities going way back. They have beautiful math proofs of Byzantine fault tolerance and even asynchronous, purely, truly asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, the form, the strongest kind of guarantees, but they're hopelessly inefficient. And there is currently, research going on on how to make them better and there's little tiny incremental improvements and people are still getting PhDs in it and publishing papers in it and they're in journals and conferences and none of them are deployed because they're so slow, but the math is beautiful. So start with that math. And then the hash graph said, could we do a voting system with no votes? Let's build a voting system with all the math proofs of the voting system, but no votes because that's the inefficient part is all those votes. So imagine this. You want to spread out your transactions as fast as possible to give them to everybody. So you do a gossip algorithm. The gossip algorithm is you give your transactions to random people who give them to random people who give them to random people and it spreads exponentially fast like wildfire and pretty soon everybody knows the transactions. Everybody gets every transaction fast. No leader, no taking turns, nobody is different from anyone else. Everyone is equal. There's no DDoS attacks. Um, there's no way that a malicious node can do anything bad. We've digitally signed our transactions so you can't forge them. Everything is beautiful. That gets the word out as fast as possible, but there's no consensus on order, so we haven't solved the problem. But it's fast. Gossip is going to be fast. But then we add something else. 
we had a tiny bit of information to each transaction or each group of transactions. Very little extra, just a few more bytes. Um, so maybe 1% more bytes going over the internet. No bandwidth cost really. And what we get is not only does everybody know the transactions, they know the complete history of everyone who talked to everyone. You will know exactly who Alice has talked to and in what order she talked to them. And when she talked to Bob, you'll know who talked to Bob right before that conversation. And then who talked to him before that. And you'll know every time somebody gossiped, who they gossiped with. But when you gossip, you tell them all the transactions you know, and you tell them about the graph itself, about this history itself. In other words, we're not just gossiping about transactions. We are gossiping about gossip. By doing gossip about gossip, we get this beautiful view of what everybody knows. And because I know exactly what Alice knows and when she knew it, I can run the voting algorithm incorporating votes from Alice without Alice ever sending those votes. I can just predict how she ought to have voted and vote for her in my head. And I can figure out how, I should, how Bob would have voted if he had voted. So there's no need for him to send me votes. I can run the entire voting algorithm in my head without anybody ever sending me a vote, without anybody ever sending a receipt. So you could run one of these voting algorithms that has the beautiful math proofs and strong, strong security without any voting there actually happening. In fact, we can go even further and we can get math proofs that will have fairness in our results. So what kind of speed do we get? Gossip about gossip with virtual voting lets you run right at the limit of the speed of the internet. Whatever your bandwidth limits are, that's about how fast your transactions per second can be. You're never gonna get faster than that. And how secure is it? Byzantine fault tolerant with asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerant. The strongest kind of security possible and the strongest fairness. We have mathematical proofs of fairness. You get all the benefits of the pure voting systems plus the fairness, and it's totally efficient. You, you can do it very, very fast. And so that is why the virtual voting system is what you would actually deploy rather than the voting system, and nobody's ever deployed a voting system, and it avoids all the problems of the other three technologies, the proof of work and the leader-based and the economy-based, and it definitely avoids the problems of hybrids where you've glued together several of these systems. And that is Hashgraph. Hashgraph is the virtual voting-based DLT.